I believe that the Catholic Church is the church, the false church in the last day. For instance, the Bible says over in Daniel chapter 9 that that false church will seek to change times and laws. So when I look at your Ten Commandments, I see you've taken commandment number two that talks about graven images. You've taken it off completely. And then you've taken commandment number nine, which says thou shalt not covet. And you make that into two commandments. That's a sign that this church has messed with God's Ten Commandments. Well, Julian, let me just ask you this. Where are you getting the Ten Commandments? Are you, You're not getting them from the Bible, or are you? you? Where are you getting them from? Well, for, well say, for instance, your, your, your commandment number four, you call it, you say it is, thou shalt honor thy mother and thy father. My commandment, the Ten Commandments in within the King James Vision, commandment number four is to remember the Sabbath day. Okay, but, and then commandment number five, is to on, is to honor your mother and your father. But but, you but Julian, my my question is where you're getting your ten commandments. Are you getting them from the Book of Exodus, the Book of Deuteronomy, or somewhere else? Because, because there's a different listing. Because there there there's there's not a there's no bullet points in the Bible. That's all I'm getting at. I'm going to let Carlo address your question. But do do you want to tell me where you got the ten commandments, Julian? Well, I got it. I got I read it from uh, Deuteronomy. I also read it from Exodus chapter twenty. Okay, okay, fair enough. That's all right. Th- thank you, Julian. Yeah, so Julian, thank you very much for your question, and we do appreciate it. So my f- my first thought is you appeal to Daniel chapter 9, and I don't have the passage in front of me, so I'm assuming what you're saying is there in Daniel chapter 9 concerning the changing of God's laws. All right. Well, what kind of laws are we talking about here, right? Because if you're going to say that, well, if a church changes God's laws, well, then it cannot, it will be the false church spoken of in Daniel 9. Well, if that's the case, you're going to have to reject first century Christianity, brother, because the first century Christians didn't hold fast to the Old Testament laws, the ceremonial precepts, that is. So laws can change. And we see that in salvation history. St. Paul himself tells us in Colossians 2.16, don't let anyone make judgment, pass judgment on you, whether food or drink, festivals or Sabbaths or new moons, etc. So laws can change. So the question is, well, which kind of laws? Well, if we're talking about moral laws, like you've brought up, Julian, the Ten Commandments, my first point is this. The Catholic Church has not changed any moral laws. We still affirm the moral laws that are revealed to us and that we can know by reason alone in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5. These are all laws that God gives to the Israelites that flow from our human nature. The Catholic Church has not abrogated any of those laws. The Catholic Church 100% says, you better follow them. In fact, Julian, the Catholic Church teaches that if we break these Ten Commandments, if we do not uphold these Ten Commandments, then we cannot inherit eternal life at the end of time. We affirm what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 19 when the rich young man asked him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus Christ said, keep the commandments. What you're asking about is not a—what you're bringing up is not a matter of changing laws. So I want to be very clear about that. That's not what's at issue here. What's at issue is the enumeration of these laws and how we're going to categorize them. Now, concerning the enumeration, there are a variety of ways of listing the Ten Commandments, Julian. The Catholic Church has adopted the enumeration of St. Augustine. Even Lutheran confessions adopt this enumeration. You have a different enumeration among some of the Greek fathers— so you have a different enumeration in Greek in Orthodox churches as well as Reformed communities. So there are a variety of ways of listing and categorizing the Ten Commandments. Now, concerning the justification for the Catholic enumeration, you brought up Commandments 2 and 9. So for us as Catholics, we, you know, you for, for you, for you, and according to your enumeration, commandment number two is thy shall not make graven images. We as Catholics, Julian, do not see that prohibition of making graven images as a distinct commandment because it falls under the first commandment of having no 
false gods. Because immediately after God says, do not make graven images, he says in verse 5, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. And that falls under the very first statement, you shall have no false gods before me. And so that's why we as Catholics do not see, thy shall not make graven images, as a distinct commandment. It is a commandment, right? Because graven images in Hebrew there, pasel is the word, it is used elsewhere in the Hebrew scriptures for idols. In other words, God's simply saying, don't make idols. Yeah. Well, that's the same commandment in essence as don't have false gods. And so we as Catholics enumer- see the, the, the prohibition of making idols as part of the first commandment. Now concerning your commandment nine, thy shall not covet, we as Catholics make a distinction between the material goods of this life that we shall not covet of our neighbor and our neighbor's wife. Because whenever you read the scriptures, Julian, there is a distinction that's made between coveting goods and coveting your neighbor's wife. Well, we as Catholics do not consider our neighbor's wife as as on the same level as material goods that our neighbor will have. We see a distinction between the two. And that's why we draw a distinction between two distinct commandments in essence, coveting our neighbor's material stuff and or goods, and then coveting our neighbor's wife. Those are two distinct sins in essence, right? You know, coveting our neighbor's wife, that's lust, as Jesus teaches us in Matthew 5, 27 through 28. Coveting our neighbor's goods, right, is going to involve envy, but it's an essentially different sin because our neighbor's wife is not the same kind of good as our neighbor's material stuff. So that's what I would have to say in response to that.